I have a problem. Sherlock and Clay to the rescue. It was just another Saturday morning at the farm. I got out of bed and I put on my Birkenstocks and I started running over to, yeah, the bathroom, because that's where we all start, right? I did the things that I needed to do and then moved right on. So normally I would just go right to my computer room and start working, but since it was Saturday and I saw a package, I decided to pick up the package and put it on the couch and open it and see what it was. Oh boy, I couldn't wait to see what it was and neither could Dewey and oh, it was a book. I headed into the kitchen, which is the only warm room, but we'll get to that later. Remnants of last night's dinner stared me in the face. I reached for my morning breakfast drink sat down on the only chair in the only warm room in the house. As I looked around, I saw something I didn't like to see. It was not a good sight. I didn't know how I was going to either read or relax in this space. Look at it. Granted, it's Saturday morning and we have yet to clean the house, but oh my word. I said to Cammie, We gotta figure out a way to change this room around. I put my breakfast shake down and started cleaning the house. Then Tom comes home from wherever he was, tells me he loves me, and... But! Let me get back to the story why this is the only warm room in the house. You see, this is the stove we use, and this is the stove that does not get used because it is April, and it is supposed to be warm, so we only burn one fire. All winter long, Tom has been working extremely hard to keep us toasty warm by gathering wood for the homestead. To him, it's money and it's effort and it's energy and he works so hard to get this wood and he splits it all by hand, strong, burly guy that he is. Now he has to split it in pieces, pieces that will be small enough to get in the fire. So more splitting, more wood. Over and over, round and around he goes to keep fires going all winter long. So by the time April comes, he's done. There he is, the poor guy, and what can I say? That's where the wood was. And this is where the wood goes right there. So I head to the door and I look and the door's open. Oh no! I say. The only possible assumption is that one of the dogs escaped during my little la-di-da through the yard. So I run around the yard. I look everywhere. I go calling for Carlisle. I can't find him anywhere. I look on the street because there was a time a few years ago when Tom brought wood in and forgot to close the door and Carlisle ended up on the road and it was so scary. I run back in the house. Carlisle, 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 I say. There he is. He's hiding. And well, he's deaf, so he didn't hear me. Poor little guy. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, now back to my story. We're not heating this room. And I am cold. I am just cold, cold, cold. Everybody's cold. Dewey is sitting by the fire. We are cold, trying to warm our hands. It is cold. But to Tom, firewood is money. Remember that. He feels like every time he burns firewood, he is burning money, and he just can't stand to have that happen. But the problem is that I want to read my new book, and I want to sit down in a warm spot and read my book. So I go back into the kitchen, and oh yeah, that's right. So I do the only thing a person can do. I roll up my sleeves, and I dig in. gonna bring a rug in from the front hall. I just think this rug will look really good. Gold and black, I really like it. So I bring it in, I put it down, it looks great. I sweep up the floor because things always get on the floor from the fireplace. Just such a mess and the dogs want to eat it. I play with Dewey. Guy, this dog's cute. As then Tom comes back with the wood and oh, I've blocked him out of the house so I have to move everything. He comes in. Now I think, good, another set of hands. Only problem is, Tom has gone outside without eating his breakfast, and so he is faint. 
So I do what every good wife does. I hand him his glasses, I take off my sweater, and I hand him some almonds and say, here you go. Head over to finish what I was doing. By that, I mean move the couch, and Tom sits on it. He is nonplussed by my theatrics. So I say to him, can't you sit on a different chair? He complies. Tom regains his strength and comes to my rescue. I mentioned to him that those lights are in my way, and he says, well, we can take them down. Well, I think, why can we take them down? He goes, well, we don't have any electricity in that room anyway. We might as well just take them down. In the meantime, a tiny little ball from the screw falls on the floor, and I don't want Dewey to eat it because he eats everything. I frantically look all over the floor. What's that? What is that? I don't find it. I kind of forget about it. There are other things to see here. Tom walks over to the blanket chest he made me many years ago. Oh, it's so dusty. That's what happens from fire. Soot, soot, soot. He opens the lid and looks inside. He closes the lid and with his strong arms picks up the blanket chest. Because it will bother me, he sits on the couch. That's not funny. I say. He laughs and gets up and continues to work. I ask him to move the settle under the flint sign because I think it'll look really good there. Yes, but now we have a problem. It wobbles. I realize that I have no end tables for that spot and it just looks so bare. Well, you know. What? In America, we have stores that will sell you practically anything. Did you just give me permission to go to the store and buy some tables? No. <laughs> it did sounded not. like you did to me. While Tom sweeps in already swept floor, I go in and get another rug for that area. I know that the rug that I have there with stencils is perfect, but I don't want to use it because it is my front hall rug. So I grab my only other rug that I have in the house that I can use, but no. Alas, my other front hall rug is now in the tavern where it looks so much better, so I'm using my full rug in the front hall. But this one looks best here and Dewey agrees. We look over at that blanket chest. I don't like it, I don't like it at all. Tom takes a look in that blanket chest and oh, it's filled with stuff. What is in here? Socks? What else? Towels? What else? Oh, there's an umbrella, slippers. Good grief. Oh, and Dewey harnesses. And just like that, Dewey brought me the screw right at my feet. Tom puts it back up. Good boy, Dewey, good boy, yeah, good boy. Cammie volunteers to use the blanket chest in her room, and Tom dutifully drags it up. Meanwhile, I clean up some of the soot from the fireplace. Tom comes back to move the table and finds out that that too is broken, and so he quick does a few repairs. Now I have two tables in here. What am I going to do? After hunting all around the house, this is what I came up with. The best reading nook ever because the other chairs are straight and tall and nobody will sit there and talk to me when I'm trying to read. It's the perfect situation. Reading nooks must be private and secluded. That still, something's not right. I try the tulips and the slipware, too small. So then I find the perfect solution. It's the big burl bowl. This is the perfect primitive reading nook. Sherlock Ann Clay strikes again. But that's not all. During the excavation of the blanket chest, another book was found, one that had been lost. Now I have two books to read in the reading nook. First, detective decorator Ann Clay goes outside to get a breath of fresh air because she is now hot. Imagine her being cold all day and now she is hot as soon as her reading nook by the fire is finished. I look up at the sky. It looks like rain. This is not good. I return to the house, thankful that the missing reading nook has now been found. I can't wait to sit in the settle and read. It's going to be so nice. Hey! I say. 